Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is a great honor and pleasure to be a part of the International Prostate Cancer Update 2023. I want to thank the organizers for the invitation to present on molecular imaging. My name is Andre Agaru. I'm a professor of radiology and nuclear medicine at Stanford University. What are the mo nuclear medicine modalities that we use? We have access to PET-MRI, PET-CT, and SPEC-CT. These are true examples. Uh, the sum is better than its parts, and I'll try to convince you about that in the next few slides. But let's start with how does nuclear medicine work, and the most important thing is the tracer principle. In most instances, we take a molecule, and the workhorse in, in PET outside of prostate cancer is FDG, fluorodeoxyglucose. So we take a molecule, the oxyglucose, in the second position, we substitute the hydroxy with F18. This is injected in patients, and it behaves similarly up to a certain point. It's injected in trace amounts, hence the tracer principle. The body recognizes certain things as not being part of it, and therefore um, uh, it, it does not go into the entire Krebs cycle, but it goes into cells that overexpress GLUT1 or GLUT5 receptors, and cancer cells have higher energy needs. They use more glucose, therefore FDG helps. Now, what about scanner technology? In this case, PET and CT, they're simply a CT and a PET put together. So on the left, we have an illustration of how the CT works. You have the X-ray tube rotating around the patient while the table advances, and that produces very high quality of different tissues attenuating the X-rays in the body. Now on the right, in general, after the CT, what we inject in the patient intravenously, sometimes given orally, but most times intravenously, gets incorporated in biological processes, physiological or pathophysiological, and then that radiation, that small amount of radiation is recorded by these detectors. For PET, you need to collect things that come, ray of light that comes at 180 degrees apart. Millions of these events are collected in order to produce images. Therefore, PET takes a little bit longer. What about PET-MRI? PET-MRI is truly simultaneous for most acquisitions. And for that, it required a lot more investment. It required going from photomultiplier tubes to silicon photomultipliers, SIPMs, that transform the optical signal directly into an electrical signal that's sent to a computer. But you can imagine having these electronics inside a magnet, not easy to do, and having a magnet next to an electronic system, not easy to accomplish. So it took quite a bit of effort for this to happen, but there are now at least three vendors who produce these simultaneous PETMRs for human use. And I will try to convince you that uh, PETMRI, it's really a great tool, especially at early stages of prostate cancer. So if you look at this illustration of the various stages of prostate cancer, early on from biopsy guidance to local therapy to staging pre-surgery, PETMRI, in my opinion, if you have access to it, is the way to go. Earlier stages of recurrence, particularly pelvic recurrences, PETMRI can play a role. Later on, PET-CT replaces PET-MRI and the late stages of disease where we think of radioligand therapy, SPEC-CT plays a role as well. Obviously, everybody is now fully aware of the role of prostate-specific membrane antigen. Uh, this is uh, a protein that's overexpressed in prostate cancer. It has enzymatic activities. It's a great misnomer. It's not prostate-specific, as you can see in the biodistribution on the right, but it is overexpressed in up to 90% of prostate cancers. You can see uptake in lacrimal glands, salivary glands, liver, spleen, clearance and binding in the kidneys, uh, some clearance in the bowel, as well as clearance through the ureters into the bladder. There are two FDA-approved radiopharmaceuticals, gallium-68, PSMA-11, and F18-DCF-POL. There are many others uh, in earlier or more advanced stages from phase one to phase three trials, and they will become available soon. So let's start looking from the early stages. I said PSMA at biopsy guidance. There are men where multiple parametric MRI is of great help. However, there is a proportion where the MRI of the prostate is negative or equivocal, so pirates one, two, or three, and or the biopsy is negative and they still have persistent elevated PSA or PSA density. In this case, we've run a study where we show that using PSMA helps. It helps identify clinically significant prostate cancer, and this is an example. A man with a negative multiparametric MRI the red arrow 
points to a focal area of uptake at the apex of the prostate on biopsy, targeted biopsy by this PET signal. This was found out to be Gleason 3 plus 4 prostate cancer. And uh, panel C, you can see the green needle tracks from non-PET guided biopsy missed the area in red where the cancer was located. So this is an area of great promise for selected patients. What about local treatments such as high-intensity focus ultrasound or high-dose rate brachytherapy? This is another area where PET-MR can help using PSMA or other tracers. In this case, pre hifu the biopsy tracks in green, benign tissue in red, the clinically significant cancer. It does have PSMA uptake and that PSMA uptake resolve with HIFU treatment. Another area on the contralateral side on the left was biopsy after treatment was proven to be a 3 plus 3 prostate cancer, so not clinically significant. But important here, perhaps PET-MRI with PSMA can help eliminate the need for biopsies after focal therapy, in addition to being able to guide what areas to treat. Now let's move on to the next stage, pre-prostatectomy. This is an example of the prostate cancer itself being clearly seen on PSMA in the right aspect of the gland. In addition, uh, perirectal fat lymph node uh, is present and on prostatectomy that was nodal metastatic disease. There are many studies showing value in patients with high risk prostate cancer for having PSMA per MR when available prior to prostatectomy. There's also predictive value both for disease-free survival and time to biochemical recurrence, and this depends on the intensity of the uptake, as well as the presence or absence of nodal disease on the pre-surgery PSMA PET. So this is another area of, of great interest going forward. At biochemical recurrence, this is the phase three study that led to the PYL approval, the Condor study, and you can see even at PSA under 0.5, high positivity rates, about 36%. And as you go higher and higher PSA, the positivity rates increase significantly. This is now our own data at my institution in the uh, research access program using the same tracer. And you will see that the PSA under 0 0.5, our positivity rate was actually 65% and going higher. With the same tracer, what is different is we have access to modern scanner. So the message here, if you have a patient with low PSA for whom you suspect biochemical recurrence, it is appropriate to refer them to a center that has access to modern scanners. If you use a 20-year-old scanner, you are unlikely to find where a PSA of under 0.5 is coming from. Now, one of the uh, most recent developments after years of research uh, is diagnostic. So you, you treat what you see, and then you see what you treat. So if you have a target, in this case PSMA, you have a diagnostic compound, and you have a therapy compound. So if the prostate cancer lights up with a diagnostic compound, you know that you can treat it with higher forms of radiation, such as beta, lutetium, or alpha actinium 225. These are some of the results from the vision trial, the large phase three studies that led to the FDA approval of lutetium PSMA 617, showing reduced risk of death, as well as reduced risk of progression. There are ongoing studies now to move this to earlier stages of uh, prostate cancer and some of the preliminary results are encouraging. I mentioned SPEC-CT at the beginning. In my institution, with modern SPEC-CT, we can do SPEC, whole body SPEC, at the speed of PET. So we scan every patient after treatment. The goal of that is to document that the treatment went where we intended it to go. Also, after subsequent cycles, to evaluate response to treatment. And if there's no more lesions, we can stop perhaps and then restart treatment when the PSA starts going up again. If you don't see disease again, what are you treating? And I would um, ask that you know the high image quality from those. And there are multiple studies showing excellent response to radioligand therapy. We still need to address the issue of what patients are the most likely to benefit from this, but a lot of work is going in this direction. So to conclude, there's been great progress in nuclear medicine over the past decade to address unmet needs in prostate cancer. PSMA diagnostic spares are already FDA approved with more to come, including novel compounds, alpha emitters. And then I would say this is a great example of personalized medicine because you see what you treat and you treat what you see. With that, thank you very much. I'm sorry I could not be there with you in person, hopefully next year. Thank you.